Hey guys, welcome to another video here with Queen City Reefs and more. I just wanted to do this real quick intro to say thank you for, for all the subscribers. I wanted to say, I, I hope you're enjoying the content that's coming out. There's a lot more to come. I really hope that you're enjoying the specific one because it definitely took a lot of time. You know, I was at his house for over three hours. Uh, it's taking a lot of time to go through all of the footage and try to condense it as much as I can. But at the same time, you know, keep as much as I can because I felt like a lot of it was a great conversation. I really hope you're enjoying it. I hope you hit that like button. I hope that if you haven't subscribed yet, you consider subscribing. Today's video will be about his actual home aquarium, which of course he cuts frags from there and, and uses for the business, but it is a beautiful, beautiful setup, let me tell you. And so I hope you enjoy this video. And so if anybody else that's local to North Carolina here to the Charlotte area is interested in me coming by to doing a tank tour, absolutely, I'm more than happy to do so. Let's get to the video. Hope you enjoy it. Hope you like this video. Hope you subscribe. Let's get the intro rolling. Uh, yeah, so this is my 350-gallon tank by AGE, right? Uh, uh, acrylic oh, uh, right. glass that's exhibit. Um, I believe they're down in uh, Texas. Uh, this is a uh, custom built uh, for me uh, using some of their cooler things. Uh, like uh, on top is a one piece acrylic Euro brace. So it's basically an acrylic inset Euro brace, just one solid sheet of uh, three quarter inch thick uh, acrylic. So it avoids me having to uh, have cross braces because this tank is eight feet long, uh, 32 wide, and 26 high. Um, oh wow! Yeah, so it's a, it's a big boy. The depth is kind of lost when you look at it head on, but you get yeah. up close or you look at it on the side. That's where you kind of see. It goes pretty far back there. Basically, it's a powder coated steel top. Uh, the bottom oh, is wow. PVC. Uh, the base of it is a uh, PVC here is uh, delivered to me by Nemo's Reef. Um, the stand itself is a framing tech. Uh, modular uh, frame and it's just wrapped in some half inch ply. It is super light. One person can lift up this entire thing by itself. Oh, wow. And it's, uh, it's just wrapped with these uh, magnetic panels here that I can just lift off. It's powered by G5 uh, Radeon Pros, not the Blues. I kind of went back and forth trying to figure out which ones I wanted. I stuck with the Pros. Uh, it's enough blue when it has to be blue and it's enough white when it has to be white. If I were to do it again, uh, I'm getting G6s for this soon, and uh, I'm probably gonna end up going with the G6 Blues, because I mean, I'm, I'm probably on the blue side of the spectrum is where I kind of like it to be. Sump-wise, we have a Crystal Reef Aquatics, the CRA, that's the SR60. This is uh, about a 100 gallon uh, sump. Pretty basic uh, setup and layout here. I'm not really running anything crazy. Right down here is uh, what I would call a cryptic refugium. Basically just filled up with some rock with lots of sponges inside. Trident handles a lot of my, you know, daily testing just to uh, keep, make sure that things are in, in check right now. 55 watt uh, UV sterilizer here is what I use in line just to kind of keep my water clear, keep any type of pests and uh, reduce any type of diseases or anything like that that could get in a tank. Not from a fish bringing it in, but primarily from a coral bringing it in, you know? Uh, we tend to dip in between tank moves. Duck pond to fish room will dip. This tank to duck pond to fish room will dip at each stage of the way, just to kind of bring it down a little bit. It is an SPS dominated tank. Recently, I've been experimenting with uh, light. Coral growth, I'm getting really, really good. Light is where I was on the lower side of the par spectrum here, tending to only run about like 160, 170. I have it set right now on a schedule to increase that par value up to about 80% from 65 up to 80% over the course of about 30 days. And so far, the first things that I've started noticing since that uh, increase in par, I'm right around 68, 70% uh, right now, is I'm starting to see um, color, um, color reactive pigments come back into the corals. For example, this guy here was all almost all green with slightly pink tips. Now I'm seeing more blue and pink and, and red in the bases, which I wasn't seeing before. And actually I have two of them 
in slightly different par with this one here getting uh, that one getting more par than that one back there. And the one that's getting more par is showing up a lot of a uh, lot more color, a lot yeah. more purple uh, than the one that's over here. But I'm pretty sure it's going to follow suit. And, and right before we were off camera, uh, we were talking about, the, the, you know, that you knew the name of all these corals. And so what's the name of that one? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. We're, we're definitely on the same boat, man. Yeah. We, we buy these expensive corals just because of how beautiful they look. And as much as I want to remember that name, just because a lot of people are really into this whole naming thing, by the, by the time I get it home and unpacked and placed somewhere, I, I forget. I forget right. the, the name of these corals. And you know, the thing about it wow. is too, what, what ends up happening with me especially is, I mean, I see corals a lot all the time. And I'm, you know, it's a funny joke. Uh, Kevin, uh, a good friend of mine over at Queen City Corals, he used to be part of TRC a while back as well. Awesome dude, like still best of friends. Uh, it's a kind of a running joke. Every show I go to, I buy PC Rainbow. And the reason I buy PC yeah, Rainbow I know why. <laughs> is because everybody's PC Rainbow looks different. Yeah. Uh, or whatever they're calling PC Rainbow yeah. looks different. And every time I see it, I believe that it's just such a beautiful coral, I end up buying it. So, but all of my PC rainbows that are in here, they're all, they're all different types of PC rainbows. And a lot of them have color shifted and they look weird now and they've changed around and I can't really tell. So whenever I go back and I see a PC rainbow, I think I've bought a uh, PC rainbow from uh, BMF, uh, from uh, Frenchie, uh, every, almost every show <laughs> that I've been to, he's like, I was like, so is that one a PC Rainbow? He goes, yeah. I was like, yeah, I want that one too. <laughs> so, you just can't help it. it yeah, it's kind of like buying a PC Rainbow from everybody. Just some for myself when I come back and I see I have duplicates or whatever. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's an affordable coil. It looks absolutely gorgeous. I'm honestly convinced I would be happy in a tank that's just all PC, PC Rainbow. Rainbow. Because that thing that, that that is, depending on where you put it at, and I have two right now. Up, up, up at the top, I've noticed that it doesn't develop any colors with the bright light. It's just red, mm -hmm. red, red. And then I have one right under that, and it has the green, reds, and yellows in, yep. inside the, the yeah. you know, the, the skin. Well, it's true because it's getting the green, reds, and the yellows yeah. down at the bottom yeah. there. But when it was up at the top, it said no. So the thing about it is, and with me, it's kind of a terrible thing, um, is valuing a coral for me is very different than everybody else um and i say that with the utmost respect for people's wallets and what they can afford or whatever but valuing them apart from their beauty is different for me i i'm, I'm exposed to them i see them i i can grow them i have you know success with them so when something gets to be this size if i spent a hundred bucks for the frag it is something in my mind that doesn't allow me to charge a hundred bucks for that frag. For me, I'm only willing to pay 20 bucks. I bought it a hundred, but I'm only willing to pay 20 bucks for it. So when that goes up for sale on my site, it's going to be 20 bucks or 29.99 or whatever. And that's what ends up happening. Almost, I would say every single frag on the website is named. It's from someone from somewhere because uh, I very rarely bring in a lot of like um, maricultures and stuff like that. Uh, they just bad track record with keeping them alive long term. Uh, but the stuff that's named and it's been in the hobby for a long time, I bring them in here. They all start off here like on this little rag. This is a prime example of some stuff that I don't think I have. Like for example, I thought I didn't have Spyro the Dragon. So when I bought a Spyro the Dragon, <laughs> I don't even know what I paid for it. But then I came back home and I put Spyro the Dragon right here and then realized directly in front of Spyro the Dragon <laughs> was a giant Spyro the Dragon. So I'm just thinking to myself like, oh, well, I feel kind of dumb, but I'm pretty sure Frenchie's going to watch this right now. Uh, Mark French, for those of you who don't know from BMF, awesome frags, by the way. Oh, I, uh, I bought from him this yeah, last show. Uh, yeah. He's probably going to watch. one of those. Yeah, he's probably going to watch this and go, yeah, I knew that idiot was going to buy that. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it, it's stuff like that that happens. I mean, I forget about things that I, I, that I have. Um, and, and it happens because, you know, you see these things that shows in a little bit different light, in a different area. You're looking at them from top down with some glasses on. You know, I don't know, maybe you're just having a really great time 
because you're at the show and it's like, oh my God, it's so awesome. The adrenaline is high. Yeah, the adrenaline is super duper high. And and you see these really cool things and then you want it and you buy it and you realize, oh crap, I have it. I mean, I really don't know how many species I have uh, in this tank. Um, And YouTube viewers would know that like for the last time I probably gave an update on this tank, I had just started adding some things in here. Um, This tank is actually probably only about a year old. I gotta say that I I appreciate you letting me film this tank too because you started your, you know, I don't know if you started your channel with this one, but you started a series of this tank here and you have not given an update in such a long time and you are seeing this update here now. From from that video, check out his his last video. You had small little corals. Small little corals in there. And this thing is like completely, completely filled out. I mean, I know there's a lot of corals that still have a lot of growing to do, but. I'd be one happy camper if my tank looked like this right now. Like, yeah, and that's the thing. Like, you know, I never thought I would say I'm out of space in 350 gallons, but I am really struggling to find a spot. I'm gonna, you know? I'm gonna start asking you questions, be- and these questions really are based off of uh, what I'm experiencing and just trying to now gauge what to do in my own tank based on mm-hmm. your experience here. And that number one question really is. How the heck do you have so many corals like right next to each other and not having the problem of, and I, and I can see some about to get closer, oh, yeah. but you know, how do you, how do you keep them from, from war, you know, that coral warfare of killing each other and all that, you know, being so, so close together. And I'll tell you on, on my side, what I'm dealing with is I bought a bunch, a bunch of corals and a lot of them have no name and a lot of them do, but I bought them at that, you know, at this, this size frags mm-hmm. right here. And so when they're little, you're not thinking you know, in the future that they're going to grow. Or in one of the biggest things that that I should have thought about is at least get to know the coral for for with a growth pattern because you never know what what the growth pattern. Some are tabling out, some are tabling like this. And so now that they're growing, I'm having to cut the sides and all that stuff because they're about to touch each other. And I'm like, man, I should have never put them so close to each other. So so what? So violence. So Vi- violence, is, violence is how yeah. is how you do it. Be, uh, uh, and let me let me let me explain. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> for example, like up here in, in, in the corner, you can see there's one, two, three, four frags there. One of them has completely engulfed that rock, the entire cap, like this guy right here. Let like, me you know what? let me start. Yeah. So you're talking about this yeah, one right there, exactly. right? Exactly. So that guy's completely engulfed that rock. He chose to base out that large to wrap around instead of growing up which yeah. is what I expected them to do. Now, the other three that are on that same precipice, they've kind of almost done the same thing with their crazy little base out that they're doing. So how do I keep it? I don't. I let them fight their battle. Now, typically that base, they'll decide at that base where they are happy. But where I find that they'll fight are in tips. Tips will make Mm. them fight. Bases typically won't make them fight. So what I'll do sometimes is I'll go through there with what I call uh, like a dental pick with a sharp edge. And I just literally raise that entire line around them. Just an act of violence inside of the tank. Just raise that entire uh, piece just to keep it there. Two months later, it's back. (laughs) <laughs> so, you know, just a constant. I just got tired of doing it and said, all right, go ahead, fight. See which one of you is going to go. Now, obviously, I took a backup. You know, I slapped off and said, all right, I'm just going to hold this over. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> you know, I took, I took a backup piece just in case, you know. But otherwise, you know, they're going to play out because realistically, even like in a 350 gallon tank, honestly, most people could probably fit like 12 full grown size colonies. Me, I kind of like them when they're about that size. I want, I, and I really want them to stay that size. Yeah, it almost seems like that's the perfect size right there. Because you get to, have to keep a variety. Alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when they start getting like these guys, like super huge like that, then you're starting to run out of space. And I kind of built this rock scape in such a way. Uh, it's kind of like a cross between the, the, the what is it? The bonsai. NSA, yeah, the, the NSA. Bonsai, NSA type situation. So each piece is modular. And uh, what I like to do with a lot of my larger colonies when they're starting at big colonies is that I, I take them out and I put them down on a plate because this is still very much a working tank, right? So I will frag out of here. 
So I will yank up a colony up out of here, cut a couple pieces off, put it back in, you know, maybe orient it different to make it grow in a different direction. Um, and, you know, the thing about here is that I, I can't, I can't forcefully make them grow in a direction and I can cut and snip and try to train them in that, in that direction. And it works sometimes. Uh, other times they just do what they want to do. Like I've been trying to stop this green guy that I don't know what it is. It's not a green slimer though. But I've been trying to get it to stop growing that way and grow that way. And it just says, no, I just want to keep going that way. It looks like a bottle brush one. So but basically what I've done is I just cut out the inside of this blue stag. Got it. And just let it keep going. And when it gets to that edge, I'll just cut that edge off and just let it keep going that way. And I don't know. We'll see what happens when it gets there eventually. I've seen some videos from BRS, not BRS, Worldwide Corals, where they say that eventually they cut them so much that they stop growing from that because they kind of like, I don't know if they feel the other coral there, but sort of like coral, coral warfare and they end up just growing in a different pattern after after so many cuts or something like that. Yeah, so I let them sting first and then I cut them. Got it. So like, for example, like my, I know which ones are going to sting. Like that tenuous up there is going to, is going to sting with that green slimer. Mm. And I'll let them sting first and then I'll cut the piece just so it knows like no you know yeah, yeah. Um, Almost this like guy is them. just he's just mean like a violent coral that just grows like crazy I, I actually stuck him in there and i meant to move him but by the time i went to move him he was already encrusted on there and i just said all right well you're staying there just do your thing bud that is a huge that is literally like as big as my hand probably bigger bigger because it's further back but this is a beautiful tank, man. Definitely beautiful tank. Yep. Uh, I mean, and, and it's cool. Like maturity helps play out a lot. I mean, the fish load in here is not that crazy. Uh, I actually do want to add some more wrasses, but just small fish. You know, fish is going to swim around and dither around and, and have a good time. Uh, I'm a really big fan of millies. And as you can see, I have a lot of millies. Uh, I just think that their colorations are so unique. And, and, the, and, and the different. millies, like that's one of yep. them right there, right? Dirty hairy. That's a dirty hairy? That's a dirty hairy. That thing is definitely a hairy. Super <laughs> duper long. I mean, the polyp extension on all of your SPS are just incredible, man. Like, they're, you could tell they're super, super happy in, in this tank. Yeah. Oh, so, wow. I've never seen a conch that yeah. big. Uh, wild. Wild? Yep. Another wild conchs from Florida. <laughs> wow. That we uh, ran down the reef of Palooza. Went fishing, saw conks, said, oh, hey, check the laws. Yes, we can take these. <laughs> Grabbed the cup and brought them up, threw them in the tank and said, do your thing, buddy. That is, that is cool because now you have a story for that one. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, I mean, as far as polyp extension, um, there's one product that I use. I don't know if it's the cause of it, but Emmy Polyp Extender, uh, Emmy Corals Polyp Extender. It's a super affordable amino acid. I mean, way cheaper than like oh, see, the wet C A B. But it's a but it's a it's an amino acid. I use that. Um, and you know, our quarantine procedure for corals makes things super easy. But yeah. you just can't choose. I mean, so that's so that was going to be definitely another question. Flatworm stop is my go-to, just as a preventative. Stupid expensive. Stupid expensive. Stupid expensive. But if you just want to, do you feel protect. that this has done? maybe giving your coral that coloration to do you mix, mix this by any chance with coral booster uh coral booster. no uh the z z coral booster the same brand uh oh well uh, from from coral and zuck no yeah. no I, i've only ever used from coral and zuck the flatworm stop and the bio material um i mean i've been experimenting and thinking about you know trying uh reef dudes uh home home recipe for the wormwood to, to give that a try. I mean, I, I tend to like to experiment with a bunch of different things. And honestly, yeah, me, me too, to be honest. This is I, just, uh, I just so. bought a new uh, amino acid from uh, uh, Aquaforest, mm -hmm. the Power Elixir. Okay. Um, seeing how that works. I was Before that, I was using just Acro Power, and before that, I used Red, Red Sea. I buy a bunch of it, and definitely, I'm not the type to like every week change. I, you know, it's, it lasts for maybe over a month, two months, and then I'll de decide then to see if I choose something else. Yeah, I mean, there's some things that I, I believe are, are fine to mix. Uh, amino acids are one of them. Um, 
as long as they're pure amino acids and they're not like a mixture of different things. Like some Brightwell products might have iodine plus an amino or something like that. So this one does have be, mixed, but it's vitamins that they claim it's yeah. mixed with, like enriched with vitamins plus amino acids is what it says. Yeah, so I mean, I think I made a video about like choosing a system and sticking with it. You know, yeah. if, if you're gonna choose a Brightwell product, then just stay with Brightwell. You know, buy their amino, buy their salt, buy their things, because a lot of those things are going to be designed to work with each other. Yeah. It's when you're scrolling through Instagram and you see somebody's tank that's using some crazy new thing, and you're just like, oh, I've got to try that too. And then you throw that in, but then you're still using your Brightwell stuff, but then you realize that, oh, man, I'm super overdosing iodine right now because all of these products have some type of a iodine or something like that in it, you know? Uh, yeah. I tend people stick with a program yeah. if you're gonna stick with one. I definitely agree. But I think also as reefers though, it's hard to not wanna tinker with new things, especially if you're that person that, and I've heard uh, uh, Jake from Reef Builders always mention this, uh, uh, the F, uh, fear of missing out. You, yeah. know, uh, you know, you hear it's of a new product, everybody guilty. raves by it. And Absolutely. you always wanna like, you know, ex uh, you know try it out. In my case, you know, I do these YouTube videos, so then I, I want to see, you know, how things work and then be able to talk about them and, you know, create oh, yeah. content for it. Um, so far, so good, though. But, yeah, no, if, if, if uh, I definitely agree with that advice. It's, if it's something's working, stick with it. Why change it? But, but also, uh, I think, like, when, whenever you're taking advice or you're finding out about what someone's doing, um, you, know, you know, as experienced reefers, we'll know, you know, the right calcium, alkalinity, magnesium, nitrogen, and phosphorus, that's great. When you truly see somebody else's tank that's more exceptional than yours, you know, or something they're achieving a better coloration than you are, those base parameters are probably not going to be what's doing it. Yeah. It's going to be either something with their husbandry or something in their, in their, what I call their medicine closet. Something that they do, that they just do because maybe they thought that this is what you're supposed to do, something that they're dosing, that they thought that this is what you're supposed to do all the time. And they just do it because that's what it is. Maybe they do a water change every week or whatever. And I think that's like what will separate this tank from that tank. And you know, I always look at the medicine cabinet what do you have in yeah, your I'm medicine gonna, I'm cabinet? Gonna, I'm going to need a list of that. Yeah, I mean, you can because, take a look at my medicine cabinet because, right here. Because you're right. Like, I feel that my tank, I'm happy with my tank. I feel like everything's doing great. But I can tell you that the SPS in here look a lot better than they do in mine. And so now I'm thinking, how can I get it there? Yeah, <laughs> it's just it's looking the, look in the, the medicine cabinet to see what they're adding and what they're doing that is a little bit different than, than what you are. And... Nine times out of ten, it's just something simple. It's that they're doing a water change religiously and consistently. Uh, it's that they're feeding their fish five or six times a day. You know, Instead of being that one person you know, that yeah. every other day or something right. like that. Right, boosting yeah. their nutrients up a little bit higher. They don't even know because when they test, they probably haven't just fed their fish or something like that. Um, it might be that their par is set a little bit higher or lower or whatever than yours or... Just the amount of, I mean, every tank is so different uh, yeah. in terms of what's going on inside that you really just have to look at their medicine cabinet. Just make sure that you're using either the same things or along the same line or principle. Um, but I would say for the most part, it's, this is, I, I just don't mess with it too much. Did you build this rock scape yourself? Yes. So this rock is actually Arc Reef Rock. Um, Arc Reef. So Arc Reef is uh, uh, run by Tyler from Addicted Reef Keeping, uh, Addictive Reef Keeping. And uh, I talked to him when he first brought out this line of, of rock. Um, and I wanted to get in some. Now, this was all purple before. My urchins, purple yeah, yeah. urchins over there, they're, they're really good at keeping it clean, um, scraping off all that coralline off of it. Uh, but what I did, or what my idea was I, I, I kind of laid it all out in here and I wanted to make as many flat surfaces as I could to try and suspend as much rock as possible off of the sand bed and I, I mean I think I accomplished that pretty well with most most of the structures only having you know one or two maybe three points of contact with the actual surface of the sand so 
I, I elevated it up. I, I kept everything at halfway, you know, slightly below of halfway for all of the rock structures. And I let the corals give it the height, you yeah. know, uh, that stag gave it, gave it the rest of that height. It looked kind of weird at first. Yeah, because, it takes patience, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I let the corals give it the height. Um, and my goal was just to have as many flat surfaces as possible for putting frags and corals and stuff. But as things grew, you know, um, just, you just run out of space. Just run out of space. I mean, top down, this thing looks like a, a different world. Yeah, no, there's, there's, there's a big difference with looking it up from the front. Mm -hmm. And it looks beautiful, but I've seen that difference too, you know, when you do a top down view. The colors even look different and oh. i'm assuming it has to do with the with the glass but it's just it's amazing looking at a tank yeah. that's why i also like those lagoon tanks you know mm. that that you're able to see but i also like you know it, it that's why you have to have multiple tanks yeah <laughs> pretty much um what uh do you use your own custom settings on the lights or do you use you know that popular ab plus or one of those presets that Ecotech so has? I, I use a i use a custom setting um i'm running my I'm running basically all of my blues all the way up. Um, I only run whites for around four hours a day. Uh, so white lights plus the normal blue spectrum is only for about four hours a day. My, my light schedule is actually pretty long because mine doesn't end until around 10 p.m. Uh, is when mine ends. Um, but basically is that I'm, I'm, I'm for a low and slow versus a, a high and bright. So some people are running their lights for maybe six hours or eight hours, but it's intense par for those eight hours. They're like six, 80, 90%, and then they shut off. Uh, for me, I run the lights a little bit lower, but for a longer period of time. Um, and what, for me, what that allows me to do is that the fish are active for a little bit longer, so they poop a little bit more, you know? Uh, I do end up having three meals a day for them or more, so it is a morning and an afternoon. So you feed your and, fish in yeah. here three times a day, Yeah, about three, day. four times a day, yeah. Wow. You know, I'll walk by here, I'll see them look a little bit hungry or you, uh, I'll put some more food in. You feed the corals a mix of everything, every brand. What do you feed your fish? So uh, I'm a big believer in uh, nutrition through uh, like real food, you know. So uh, we partner a lot with V2 Foods. We like a lot of their stuff, oh, I'm, I'm right? So yep. V2 Foods is what we feed as our frozen food of choice for like a quick feed. Um, for more comprehensive feeding, uh, what we do is that we make our own food, right? Um, so I go out, I buy the fresh, you know, um, oysters and clams and some white fish, usually cod or pollock or something like that. Uh, some mussels, some squid, uh, we grab spirulina, vitacam, salcon, the whole nine yards. Throw them all in a big bowl uh, blender, blend it all up into something that will break apart easy in here, and that's what we feed here. Uh, and lots of algae, of course, for the tanks, and you know some algae flakes. We have a big old bucket of flakes. We come by here every once in a while, and poof, just throw a big bucket of flakes in there, just get them, um, just get them to eat. Uh, but but yeah, we're definitely a big proponent of uh, of health through nutrition. Uh, starting off with good healthy thing you know like for example big blue here is uh he's a uh he's a rescue fish and you know he's scarred up he self-inflicted he does it when he swims up into the rocks to hide and, and live or whatever but you know basically all of those things is, is what we accomplish with just making that food it's cheaper when you're feeding these many tanks these many fish you know, just blister packs is just not going to work for you. Yeah, no. You know, you're gonna you're gonna need something more common. So we make big old two gallon flat packed uh, mixtures of food, and that lasts you months. So basically, one one preparation of it lasts me two, three, four months. So like we're down to like a last pack. So I can kind of show you what that looks like. Um, but then after that pack goes out, we'll go buy, you know, it's maybe a hundred bucks worth of seafood. And a lot of it you can go buy from the cheapest places, the Save-A-Lots and Costco's and stuff, you know, frozen shrimp. Yeah. You don't need the expensive deveined diamond encrusted ones. You just need raw shrimp. Yeah. So Save-A-Lot, Costco, Big Al's, wherever, just go grab some and grind it all up, make it into a food for them, but feed them. 
uh, they eat all day long. Fish, I don't know why people think fish eat every other day or something like that, but their main goal in life is I wake up, I eat, I make babies, I eat, I go to sleep, I might wake up and eat some more. <laughs> and that's why they have these very inefficient stomachs. As soon as you go up close to the tank, they poop. That's all leftover food that they probably had in their stomach that they were just kind of sipping on throughout the day. But now they see, you all oh, the food man's here. Poop. <laughs> Let me clear my stomach. Let me clear my stomach. Food man's going to bring new food. So if I see them poop out everything that I uh, gave to them, uh, I'll typically feed again. So water changes. I know that with those systems over there, mm -hmm. you, your water changes come from all the water you take out due to shipments and customers and all that what's your uh, schedule here and where does the water come from? 40 gallons every two weeks. 40 gallons every two 40 weeks. gallons every two weeks. Now this 40 gallon water change coincides with that 40 gallon water, uh, water change. Are they connected? The no. Okay. I water change this into there. Got it. Got it. <laughs> and then I replace the water in here. I know that this water here is going to be pretty much pristine uh, in terms of the parameters, the calcium levels, nitrate, whatever. I know the water is going to be pristine. Uh, my cleanup crew for the sand keeps things super clean down there. I don't disturb my sand bed at all uh, in here. No, not really. No vacuuming, no, nope. no raking it up or anything like that? Nope, wow. just let it go. And so the critters typically keep that pretty, uh, pretty clean down there. So I'm, what I'm doing that water change for primarily is to replace trace elements. Um, I tend to weigh an ICP test every other month. Uh, sorry, every three months for the shop systems, one for here. Um, but I don't send it for there because I know whatever this is reading at, that's what there's going to be at. Yeah. Um, but I just said, but I, I did find that with, without water changes, even dosing some trace elements, I'm still running low on things. You know, like on, they're not optimal. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't get the polyp extension I'm looking for uh, without the water changes. Uh, Things don't become as fuzzy anymore. Uh, I don't know. It just feels off in the tank. And uh, as soon as I do a water change, everything kind of just sparks back up. They start yeah. looking healthy again. So, I mean, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do the 40 gallons here. And it, it works really well for this system. Um, uh, I have to be careful about this system. Uh, I've run into diatom, uh, not diatoms, dinoflagellates twice in this system as it is right now. It didn't lose anything, but uh, it's easy for me to tank out if I uh, tank nutrients in this tank if I don't either buffer it or feed heavy. So your, so your issue is you tank out on the nutrients and that's when you get the problem uh, issues oh, like dinos and, and what about cyano and all that stuff? Have you, have you ever? No. Um, Typically with the dinos, uh, I'll tank out. I might get some cyano with it, um, but not really. I mean, there's no algae in the system. The fish and the, and the urchins really take care of it. Uh, so it's really easy because of growth in here. Uh, I do find myself feeding this tank heavy uh, when things are paling out or corals are not looking as vibrant anymore. Uh, if I'm losing reds, uh, I typically say, hey, we got to pick up the feeding in there, feed three, four times a day, just dump food in. Uh, I mix my own phosphate and nitrate. Uh, they work really well for quick fixes or if I'm fighting with dinos or something like that. Um, so that, that was going to be my next question. So when you have had dinos, what do you do to fix that issue? Food. Food? food. Just to bring up those nutrients I, back I up? I just dump food. I, I, I I seek out to create a problem, an algae problem, not a dino problem. So what I'll do is I'll feed super heavy. I'll, I'll be raising those nitrates and phosphates up. Now, funny enough. So describe feeding super heavy enough for where all the fish eat it or, or enough where you end up creating, you know, issues to where it all goes into your sump and, you know, like, what do you mean feed heavy? So feeding heavy for me is feeding the fish enough that they can consume it multiple times a day okay, so that they're just pooping and all so not just fat. once who, knows, no, who cares no. if they eat it or not but, just but multiple uh, times a day but also a feeding corals heavy so mm, lots powders. lots of powder stuff you know uh blizzard from brightwell and reef roids and benepets and just forcing the system itself to rebalance and bacterial dosing I, uh, what do you I use for bacterial? Macrobacter 7. 
cheapest, wow. easiest, super fast to find. You usually can get it on Amazon for 30 or 40 bucks for an entire, you know, half two gallon, liter. two liter yep. thingy or whatever. Um, yeah, I mean, I ordered wholesale, but I, I will, yeah. I, that's a pretty much an entire regimen that most builds that we do. Uh, they're on Microbacter for a year. You know, they're just the dosing. first year? Yep, the first year it's just Microbacter dosing. So I dose a lot of Microbacter. Uh, Microbacter Clean, uh, I like as well. Uh, just last six months or so, I've experimented with Microbacter Clean for trouble systems and maintenance systems. But, um, but Microbacter 7, really easy to dose. Can't really overdose it. Super easy, affordable. Uh, I, I like it a lot, and you know, it's part of the reason why I've probably yeah. Your tank looks downtown. You know, I know you mentioned you had dino, dinos and everything, but your tank no uh, before, this, but yeah, yeah. Uh, at yeah. this time right now, today, it looks clean. Like I don't see any algae anywhere. Like I have to, I might have to look re really hard to actually find it. So I'm assuming that has to do with your cleanup crew, with your tanks that you have in mm -hmm. here. Um, with your water changes, uh, because for, for you to feed so much, I've seen people have issues, but I guess it's just, you know, the fact that they don't have that heavy out, like you mentioned, I mm -hmm. guess. Now, filter wise, are you still not doing socks in here and all it is, is that skimmer? It's basically all that skimmer. Uh, you know, when we do water changes, I'll run. Let me bring the I'll camera run. close. Yep. 